Hello everybody, Autistic Genius here. Welcome to another great week on, uh, of course, our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. Thank you all so much for your previous support. Very, very exciting times. The next week or two, I'd like to discuss something that's been cropping up a lot on my page and on and YouTube and all sorts. And it's called a sensory diet. Now, a sensory diet to me, I wasn't quite sure. I took it quite literally and thought, sensory diet, is that just eating? Actually, no. It covers all of the seven senses. And um, today I'm going to discuss with you, just go through how you can plan a diet for any age. Just to let you know, on this, only covers four of the senses, which is sound, smell, sight. What was the other one? Sugar, sound, smell, sight. Um, hold on a minute. And taste. Now the reason why the others aren't involved is because they become more specific based on the person's age. And I'll go into those in future videos. Hearing. Um, something you can do when you're hearing. It's something good to do with a child or anyone really. Uh, it's just to go outside and listen. So if you just go outside and just talk about what they can hear. Or if or encourage them visually to like go, listen, shh. Whoa. I can hear a clock ticking. That's so cool. And my pets nibbling on hay. Something over there, it is vibrating, something over there, like a, a buzz. Mm. See, just from doing that, I've picked up three or four different noises going on at once. And I've also said that the sound is coming over there. That's also really important. Finding out where the sounds are coming from is really important as well, because that can encourage to which directions to look at. Because if, although the brain will take everything at the same point, if the autistic person is aware of the direction of what they think is the most important noise or what is the most important noise they can focus on that in that direction instead of getting it all in one way at the same level of sound like where if they can hone in on one sound that they know is important it can hopefully block out the other ones that they don't need also a really good thing for this is to think like, I don't know, you can buy these on the CD you probably need to get a, a video on YouTube plug it into a big speaker natural sound recording so we're talking things like the rain falling ocean waves, birds singing. Um, this can help with sleep, calming. And a lot of the time you'll get these sort of CDs and they'll tend to have things like flutes or really calming piano sort of sounds. This is really good for sleep. Um, brilliant for a sensory room if you wanted to calm down. Absolutely amazing. Because some a lot of people find these noises relaxing and if this is the case, just get them. Really good. Really good, simple ideas there. Play a listening game. Everything has to be made fun for children. So you can sit on a bench or sit anywhere where you can hear noises, sit very still and listen for noises. With this game, the object is to know what the noises are. So if they hear a bird, they have to be able to identify that it's a bird. If they hear a car, they say it's a car. Or if they hear a anything, any other noise, they have to be able to identify it. And also, an important thing is the direction. Like I said before, this is a really it's encouraging and this is all about developing the senses as well. It's not just about like, oh, we're doing this because it makes them feel better. No, it's all about development because autism affects the development of the brain. So this is constantly reinforcing the sensory development. So hopefully we can get to a similar point as neurotypicals and fit in more into the, and allow ourselves to live more easily into the mainstream world. Obviously, we're different and we're unique and we do and we see things a way that makes things see things differently and encourages people to like get excited and invent things and do things in a new creative way but we need to be able to function in as, mu as much as possible in the mainstream world these techniques allow us to do that um, find calm and focus in music now you can buy specially engineered music to encourage focus or calming it's going to be very much trial and error because whatever your child finds calming you may not on whatever and vice versa so you need to experiment a lot with this so you're going to be listening to a lot of rubbish just bear in mind that something they love will be something you hate so just bear in mind that you're probably going to hate the calming music, but remember, if it keeps them happy, it's going to keep you happy. Encourage musicianship. Now, this is really important because they're making the loud noises themselves, which is how, because they're playing and it's fun and they're doing it, and it's not unpredictable. It, it, it gets them more used to that noise. So playing musical instruments like you can buy xylophones, <laughs> kazoos, and encourage them to play the instruments, and if they want, Get them lessons, see what happens. Might be something for them to aspire to and get them a special interest that they can focus on. Really, really good at a young age to get them into a special interest. Also with audio, give them some control. Now the reason I say this is because unpredictable things 
things that happen suddenly are really not good for the autism brain. So if they're noises that they may not be used to or noises that can unexpectedly make them go, <gasps> make them jump, make them do it themselves. Like for example, the hoover could be something that's constantly distressing. If it winds them up when they hoover, if they want, see if they'll turn it on. It might not be the noise that they get freaks them out. It might be the fact that it comes on unexpectedly. So if you plug it in and turn the plug on and just put the hoover in the floor and say, do you want to turn it on? And they turn it on. It's not unpredictable then. And it helps them to feel safer about that noise because they have controlled it and it's and that's good for the autism brain control that's what is the essence of what it is we like things a certain way which can naturally make us controlling in some situations so giving them that little bit can allow them to feel a bit calmer pleasant calming sounds it's like white noise machines or you can get downloaded a free app for that white noise and water fountains if you've got a water fountain that night the noise of that is very nice aquarium expensive but these sorts of noises can be very calming and help with sleep mm -hmm. and just general. Sometimes having a white noise is nice because, like I talked about, silence. Ooh, silence can be very much can create an unknown atmosphere that's very unsettling for someone on the spectrum. For me, especially on a social communication level, so having a constant white noise is reassuring and comforting. So they know, so the brain, so that so it's a bit more. There's always something going on. So they could hone in on it. It's like, oh yeah, that's nice. I like that. 